fantasy football. Carling, proud supporters of fantasy football. Meeting the Burnley fan who invented new labour, Alistair Campbell. We'll be recreating a 7 0 victory for England. And we'll be saying a big hello to Wayne Rooney. But first, a few things we noticed from watching the tournament so far. Bobby Robson sounded a bit doddery on the co commentary today. We reckon the rot actually set in the day he went to a game and didn't realise he'd forgotten his mobile phone. <laughs> Poor Bobby. And there were terrible security problems at the England game today when somebody had to wake up a tramp who'd fallen asleep in the goal mouth. <laughs> yeah, <wrong. laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And it's a great effort by Croatia tonight, but their fans should remember. If you do catch sight of yourself on the big screen, you might be in vision for longer than you think. Oh, no, wrong, wrong clip. clip. Wrong clip. Can we stop that? <laughs> Go stop back. Stop that. Just it's live television. It's live home. television. <laughs> oh. oh, that's what Dennis Norman would call a fuck up. Okay. <laughs> And a great effort by Croatia tonight, but their fans should remember, if you do catch sight of yourself on the big screen, you might be in vision for longer than you think. <laughs> Can I just say, the whole show is a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> Can we try that clip all the way through to the end? We're just going to keep, Let's doing, keep it. doing it. Let's, Let's do it. Do Third it. time locking up. Vision for longer than you think. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> no! Carry on. If we get news that that clip's going to work, we'll come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> the show's nearly over. Actually, <laughs> and the Croatian trainer couldn't get anyone to look after his cat tonight, so he had to bring it with him. <laughs> <laughs> Thing that could go wrong now is Stato. So, how oh, are you, mate? Yeah, very well. Stato, 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 Thank you. Stato, have we had any more vegetables sent in that look like footballers? Well, I haven't had anything there, but I have had oh. an email oh. from oh. Julia Green from Suffolk who sent Green? us a picture of her 11 month old son Jimbo after the England France game. <laughs> A bit. Maybe Julia could send us another picture if she takes one tonight, and he should be much happier, shouldn't he? Yeah, definitely. Like yeah. You, can, you can send in Julia during this show, so get it on your email thing, take a photo of him if he's all right, yeah. and, uh, and send it in, not if he's got one of those things that kids get, like nits or measles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Have you got any other news? It? Well, the chicken drum sticks. <laughs> machine has got stuck, so <laughs> we'll play that again. No, supermarkets have reported that <laughs> 7 million chicken drumsticks were sold oh. in the <laughs>
It's all right, you know what I mean. Drumsticks. It's the only non senile member of the team. You mean chicken drumsticks? I mean exactly chicken drumsticks. What about them? <laughs> there were seven million sold in the run up to the uh, England France game and another four million sold in the run up to tonight's oh, game. Oh, that's a lot of chickens. I'll tell you something about that, though, because we read that seven million chicken drumsticks have been sold <laughs> during the run up to the England France game. And Dave said to me, seven million drumsticks? Is that how many chickens is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's three and a half million, obviously. <laughs> Chickens than you would expect are alive at any one stage. It's what I've, I've given up expecting anything after the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's interesting though because it shows how much money there is to be made out of Euro 2004, isn't it? And we've actually been looking at all the different ways in which people try and make money out of it. Yeah, the Daily Sport, for example, on its sort of personals page, which is going to be on yes, on its personals page, it's got a special Euro 2004 section for some of the, the ladies who advertise in there. And uh, one of them it says, "Pretty women, um, come and score with us. 24 hours, we cover the Newcastle and North East area." <laughs> so they travel, yeah. and then uh, <laughs> Glasgow VIP girls visit in or out. Mm. It says, in ve very discreet, luxurious surroundings. What, in Glasgow? Yeah. <laughs> Scotland, of course, not exactly in Euro 2004, yeah. but it's Aberdeen, it says. Aberdeen, new, 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 new. Custard, dribble <laughs> and drop, obviously, will be there. <laughs> Go with us, massage. Quickly moving on, this is another example we found from the Wandsworth Borough News. It's absolutely true, right? This is, have you got that? The European Football Recycling Bonanza 2004 <laughs> Country Skip Hire Limited. <laughs> yes, if England win Euro 2004, then all skips during that week will cost £100 plus VAT. <laughs> yes, £100 plus VAT, that's all. Prices do not include road permits, right? <laughs> And that means that someone, they think that people think, oh, great, England have won. I must go and hire a skip. <laughs> and but also, it... I've hired a skip. That's what they cost anyway, isn't it? About 100 quid. Well, the thing is, if England lose as well, then they'll smash the whole country up, so everyone should hire a skip. <laughs> <laughs> so put the remains of their house in. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Any other news, Stato? Well, Gary Neville recently said that Sven is the best manager he's ever played under for England. Best England manager he's ever played under. And according to Gary, Sven has removed the nonsense and silliness that has affected some England managers. The nonsense and silliness that has affected so well. Todd. Mm. So it brings us to our new series. Gary Neville's the nonsense and the silly. Yes, 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 thank you. And here's the first one. It's the moment when Des Lynham started thinking that Glenn Hoddle had gone a bit mad. He had chances, well, he half was, chances. He was the only one in free play that I felt we were going to get anything from. But I just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, you may have noticed that when um, Robert Perez came on a game tonight, he'd shaved his beard off. Look, yeah. there he is, and the famous Perez beard had gone. Yeah, we think we know what this might, what this might be. Yeah, we have got a theory. There was a picture in the papers a few weeks ago of uh, Robert Perez celebrating the Arsenal victory. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a pun on the word Arsenal by Robert Perez. Yeah, it might have been. But um, it made us think, actually, that here's a picture of Robert Perez, right? There's a lovely picture of Robert Perez. <laughs> yeah. And there's that. Can you see it together? And there's the same picture. Yeah, that, so it got us thinking, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, we just wondered that if you took that out yeah. and took that out yeah. and put that in oh, there... Look at that. Look at that. hair are identical. Yeah, that <laughs> chin looks like a kind of fabulous half-man, half-monkey ass. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's what the bears are. And anyway, now it's time for another episode of Greavesy's Gaffs. <laughs> I've seen good times and bad. Mate, am I glad to be brewing up for star names. Yes, in this episode, Jimmy does a funny face and gets such a big laugh he completely forgets that he's still on the air. Since your show's been on the air, my boss has given me a rise. Keep up the good work. Yours sincerely, T. Wogan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny old. Yeah, it is a You can bring that to remember. Hello, Sasha. That picture of uh, Jimbo hasn't arrived, has it? Well, we have actually had another picture. Oh, picture there, let's have a look. That was quick work. Right? Oh. Oh. Is that, the, is that the 
up, Bill? Well, I think it is. Hold on a minute. That'll be the guest, aren't they? Yeah. I'm surprised they still turned up. <laughs> it's Alistair Campbell. Why is it that the better something does its job, the more we take it for granted? Hello? Train. Not so bad. Last train. Not so bad at all. Philip Burger, just 99p. What do I wish for on a cloud? <laughs> Join Super Eva and get the latest Nokia ringtones with Hit of the Week. Download five smash hit tones every week. That's only 30p a tone. Just send a text to 83353 and write 7 for I don't want you back, 8 for don't tell me, 9 for left outside alone. Receive your ringtone instantly and we'll keep you posted. 83353. A little modesty, 15 pounds. A pedigree coat, 10. Something fancy, 30 pounds. Something sweet, 80 pence. Paint job, peace, passion, pride. England United. Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Proud sponsor of UEFA Euro 2004. <sighs> nice weather for penguins. Well, here's a nice simple question. In which city will the Euro 2004 final be played? A, Brisbane, B, Lisbon, or C, Athens? OK, now, it's definitely not Lisbon, right? Because that's in South Africa. No, that's Brisbane. Know your football? Don't sit on the bench. Play for great cash prizes in the Three Lions quiz. Press red now. Could Sweden be the next Vikings of Europe? He scores them by the bucket load. Oh, lovely header. Superb goal. There he is again. It's two and a minute. 4-0. Is it five? It is. Watch out, Italy. Here comes Sweden. Italy v Sweden, tomorrow, 7.30, ITV1. Anyone who was uh, watching the first half 
might have well thought they'd tuned in to the Dennis Norden Memorial <laughs> Hour. <laughs> <laughs> there was a clip that wouldn't play. We tried and tried and tried, but we finally got we it. I don't want to build it up too oh, much. No. But this, oh, this, don't uh, make me. Yeah, I think we could have a community introduction right, to this. Here, here we, we go. go. One, one more time. It was a great effort by Croatia tonight. But their fans should remember, if you do catch sight of yourself on the big screen, you may be in vision for longer than you think. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome, Hi. Alistair. Hi, nice to see you. How are you, you. doing? Now, I Very understand good. that you, you were invited to the, uh, the England-Switzerland game and you turned it down to come here, is you that true? You turned it down to come and be slightly booed by our audience. <laughs> Mildly booed, yeah, by these daily sport readers. Yes. Oh, um, <laughs> I got invited to the France game. Right. And yeah. I turned that down because I was interviewing Lance Armstrong for my Channel 5 series, which starts on July the 2nd. Right. <laughs> yeah. all, the all the technology will work. Yeah. And well, we'll say. tonight, what do you tonight mean? I was uh, given the alternative option of coming and seeing you guys, which I thought would be more fun than watching England play not very well against Switzerland. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they love you. Yeah. Yeah. They absolutely love isn't, you. Isn't your job like making people like people? No. <laughs> Only Tony Blair. No, I think you need to sex yourself up a bit, Alice. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, one of the things that I've always been lucky with, I don't give too many tosses about what too many people think about me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's a strength. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Aren't, you, yeah. aren't you quite good mates with Alex Ferguson as well? Yeah, he's, he's another one. Yeah, how's that yeah. make sense? Yeah. yeah. But did you, you didn't enjoy the game then? I thought it was all right. I thought two very, very good goals. Yeah. Uh, but I think if you watch France-Croatia t tonight, they were two better teams, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Goalie, that, that Swiss goalie, he's quite, he's quite a character, isn't he? Yeah. We've got um, some news about him, haven't we, Stato? Yeah, but before that, we've got another picture oh. of Jimbo. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh, he's, oh, he's um, gone into he's terrible like... decline, yeah. Jimbo. <laughs> old Jimbo. Yeah. Yeah, no, we were mentioning the, about uh, York Steele, the, the goalkeeper. He's the coach. The Swiss coach, Jacob uh, Kuhn, criticised his uh, club coach for dropping him earlier in the season. He said uh, he's either an arsehole or his uh, German keeper have a special relationship. Uh, he later apologised, saying the word arsehole was not exactly what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did he mean, then? Twat? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. thanks for that. Anyway, it's beautifully done. Yeah. <laughs> so, one thing that... Uh, in the England that didn't happen tonight, I think, in the England uh, Swiss game, um, that happened in the France game, was we didn't boo the national anthem tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true, because we were nearly fined, weren't we, for booing the national anthem? Is that right? Yeah, at the France game, apparently the, the fans or the, the FA would have been fined for booing it. What, what's your view on, the, on all that? Booing the national anthem? Yeah. I think it's moronic. Mm. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do. I, think, I do think it's utterly moronic. And I think it's completely counterproductive as well. You think it winds the other team? Well, up? it's like, you know, you see kids fighting in the playground and say, you know, don't you cuss my mum, right? Mm. Well, it's the same. <laughs> not, I'm don't not sure. you wind up my country? Hey, I'm not sure kids right? have said, don't you cuss my mum since 1953. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the same, it's, the same, it's the same game, it's the same mentality. Well, you think it winds the opposition? For, so, should well, the. How would you feel if you were playing for England, right? And you're yeah. standing there, God save the Queen's going. And you've got thirty thousand French people burn it. You'd get wound up. You'd play yeah. better. You might so really, what England. the England fans should do is boo God save tonight. the Queen. Yeah. No. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that. That'd be tantamount to treason, wouldn't it? To be honest with you, I'd rather opposing fans booed our national anthem than did this. <laughs> this. <laughs> Yeah, he, he did try. He did try. Yeah. He did try. So, um, am I right in saying that you're not, strictly speaking, a full-blown England supporter? You're absolutely right. Yeah. What do you think? I support Burnley first and Scotland second. <laughs> Wales. 
Yeah. Have you noticed that there's somebody going around with a whale flag at every game as well? Is there? Small, yeah. Did, well, we, noticed tonight, a, we noticed a free Willy flag. flag. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, yeah. But yeah. they are uh, very optimistic about the Welsh bloke who booked his tickets. Well, I've right. said the odd Scott, this flag yeah. there as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, I'll tell you what, I do support Scotland because, you know, that's where my background is. But I do, I'm not one of those Scots who doesn't want England to win. Right. I do want England to win. Yeah. Uh, always, I'd like them to win and play well. Yeah. Because we've always thought it's a bit pathetic, really, that Scotland fans really hate England and we don't really care. What the <laughs> right? Excuse me, what were they, what were they saying tonight? What? Are you Scotland in disguise? Right? Yeah, and yeah. Swiss was sort of, you know, getting yeah. a bit tired. So I think the English do care about Scotland. But Scotland is a much smaller country, isn't it? No, I think they, they just think Scotland are rubbish. It, it isn't. It's not what they care about. And that's what are you Scotland in disguise means. I think, yes. they, I think they could have won 3 0 against 10 Swiss people. Mm. The Scots. The Scots. Yeah. yeah. I, think Bur I think Burnley could have done. I think Burnley could have done. Yeah. Well, obviously, the sending off of poor burnt arse yeah. was a tragedy. Well, you should be really upset about that. Actually, you were really upset about that. <laughs> he's I a West Brom player. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe a player gets sent off against England and you're upset about it because he's a West Brom player. Well, he's... <laughs> and also, as a comedian, the fact that he's called burnt arse That's obviously true. makes me... <laughs> That's you can true. often see well, him so in the, the Baltic the around there that I really, really care about, and I wish he'd play, is Dimitri Papadopoulos of Greece because he used to play for Burnley. That's the only connection we've got. Did he? The entire tournament. Mm. Yeah, he did, yeah. Mm. He hasn't been pitched yet. Mm. Mm. So. Mm. Have, we, uh, have we heard any more from, um, from Jimbo's mother at all? I think, I think we have uh, got one more picture of Jimbo. Oh, ah. have we? Yeah. That's a mix off. That's, 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 that's definitely a mix off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think now it's time for Phoenix from the Flames. Phoenix from the. Flames, Phoenix, from the Flames, Phoenix. Now, before we start, I don't want any jokes about me looking like Quasimodo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. We're going to be recreating a very big moment for you. It's the day that you scored four goals in one game for England. Not that many players have done that. No, uh, Gary Lineker scored four against Spain. Tommy Lawton scored four against Holland. Who did you score for against? Uh, Aylesbury. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go? Now, come on. Tell us why you were playing Aylesbury, Peter. Well, Bobby Robson thought that if we played a warm-up against the local side, we'd win it so easily that we'd go into the 1988 European Championship <laughs> full of confidence and convinced that we could beat anybody. So, um, how did you get on at the 1988 European Championships? We lost every game. <laughs> No, I want to find out what went wrong. Well, it turns out, when we got to the 1988 European Championships, that we had to play big international teams. You know, countries like Russia and Holland. No one from the Beza Homes League at all. <laughs> I'm not sure Mr Robson had completely thought it through. <laughs> Who else did you play in these confidence-boosting warm-up games? Hendon, Hartlepool under fives, a blind ladies team and Scotland. <laughs> This team. How did you get on against them? I pulled. God, it must have been a great day for the Aylesbury lads. Well, yeah, not every day you get a chance to play against England. Yeah, and it's not every day you have a mayoress in one hand and your knob in the other. <laughs> so, all in all, it was a great day for you, Peter. Well, not really, you see. I scored four goals, but none of the other lads seemed very bothered. I never got a chance to do any proper celebrating. It made it a bit of an empty experience, really. It made me feel... How can I put it? Oh, by myself Don't wanna be Oh, by myself Anymore When I was young All right, all right, Peter. Uh, let's recreate the goals then. Uh, I'll be Brian Robson. Uh, Dave, you be. Uh... Hold on. What, we're doing the goals again? Yeah. Hmm.
what a what a lovely bloke Peter Beardsley was, wasn't he? Yeah, he was really lovely. He was. He great. told us a strange thing actually. He said when he was in Mexico, he used to play entire games and not have a drink of water. He never got yeah. thirsty at all. Oh my God! Oh God, that could that, be that him. That could be him. Yeah. Some water. <laughs> I can't even get through here. By the way, thanks for coming tonight. No, Thank you very much for coming, <laughs> Alistair. Yeah, nice cheers, people mate. you bring along. Yeah. Anyway, who's this? It's Brian Kilcline. <laughs> oh, thank you. You've, uh, it's a giant carrot, isn't it? So you've, you're actually uh, a footballer who's come as a vegetable. That is correct. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Sing it, Brian. God save.